So to live a life of sanctification, we need to understand, as I keep saying that, it is spontaneous you know, when you learn to trust and depend upon God. Right? It takes the whole weight out of your life. Right? You don't have to think, you know, I have to struggle to make my way. If you remember, who is by your side? You're not anything by yourself. All that you become, it's only because Jesus is with you. And he is in you. Amen? And uh, most of the times, you know, we try to you know, do things that we are not um, required to do so. <laughs> you know, where we need to trust God, depend upon God, we tell God, no, I can make my way. So that's not what the Bible says. You know, it takes and lifts up the whole weight and the burden out of you. And the moment you remind yourself, Lord, I trust you and I depend upon you every day. Amen. It's always me and my God. It's not never, not even a moment you can say that no, I'm alone. It's always you and God. You and God make the majority in your life. So it's so wonderful when Paul says, now who can separate me from the love of Christ? And now, by the way, now you need to understand a lot of things that can just take you away from the holiness of God. You follow what I'm saying? Small things can just, you know, come between you and God. When you talk about love, love always draws you back to God. Even at times when you fail, what pulls you back is the love of God. At times the devil knows that now he has uh, now, uh, sown in your life uh, the seeds of sin, condemnation, all those things. But still, the one thing he could not resist, he could not do anything about is the love of God. Because the love reaches out to you all the time, no matter where you are, what you have done. Even in your lowest moments, you know, the love can come and reach out to you just wherever you are. That's why the devil has a lot of problem. Right? He thought now God's going to be mad at you when you fail, when you are not holy. He's going to bang you, but those things don't happen. In fact, he said, I'm going to come and die in your place. Out of the hundred one sheep, now it goes astray. He left the 99. Now he went about looking for that one. Because even that one is very important. What an amazing God, right? He is the God of individuals. You are very important. There may be another 7 billion people here on this planet. Right now, living. But I want to tell you, you know, God is mindful about you. That's why you know, He is interested in your life. He wants to mold you, shape you. You know, you like to do all that He can so that you can become all that God wants you to be. So always you know, learn to celebrate the love of God over your life. The devil knows that he can do nothing about God's love in your life. When Adam and Eve, they went into hiding, God showed up. He did not abandon them, nor condemn them. He said, Adam, where are you? Now what he's trying to say, still I need you, Adam. Still I love you. I know you are not where you should be. But I come looking for you as Israel. Even after knowing that he has betrayed God, he has violated the word, but still he showed up saying that you are still very important to me. Right? God knows your worth and your value. Amen? Because he created you. So always remember more than what the devil can do, God has done a billion times more. So always learn to be part of the solution, not really part of the problem. So you need to remind yourself and think what God thinks, believe what God says, and do what God says. At the end of the day, you know that, you know, you are what God says that you are. So now, when you talk about holy living, there's something called loving that comes before holy living. As I keep saying that living a holy life is an outcome of your love for God. So now you need to focus more on loving God than just thinking about being holy. Sometimes you can become very self-righteous when you only think about holiness. Who cares now if you don't commit sin? <laughs> that itself is a sin because you are trying to be self-righteous like a Pharisee. So you can say to God, Lord, you know, I'm a perfect guy. I've not done this, I've not done that. You better listen to my prayer and do exactly what I tell you to do. Why you should? Does God benefit anything? Because you are not the standard of the measure of holiness, but He is. 
Amen. Always remember, you never begin from where you are. You always begin from where he has finished. He gives you the starting point. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He is the pioneer and the perfecter of your faith. I like to tell you, it's an awesome journey when you get to know more about God than just uh, thinking only about yourself. The devil likes to just bang your head over and again, always talking about you, so that you can feel more guilty, feel more condemned. All right? So there's no one to condemn you, but you'll end up condemning yourself. But God just does just the opposite. Every time you fall down, he wants you to get up. No? Pick up from where you left. And begin to walk with him once again. He's always stretching out his hand. Son, get up. Daughter, get up. Is it right or wrong? I don't think, you know, if God had not done that, none of us uh, would be where we are today. Amen? When Peter was sinking down deep in the waves, you know, he stretched out his hand saying, Come out. All that he did was Jesus. You know, he reached out to him where he was. So it's the same with you. Getting to know who God is is very important to move forward in your life of holiness and sanctification. And all these things I want to tell you, just get to know more about God, more about God, more about God. The more you know about God, you're going to exactly become how He is. I'm tired of just looking at my life. I'm tired of talking about myself. I know who I am. I know what is my past. But I'm excited more about God. Amen. Whatever I am perfect is perfect. What I am weak is strong. Whatever I lack, it is overflowing in the wine. So my business is stay connected to the wine. As I am connected to the wine, I can have everything that Jesus has. What a loving God He is. And I receive the love of God. Amen? Then you will receive His holiness. You follow what I am saying? If you don't receive the love of God, you can never walk in the holiness of God. That is the secret. That is the key. God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So God started loving you and me. He demonstrated his love by sending his own son. And then we became holy because of his love. He loved you so that he can make you holy. In the same way, you know, when you wanted to discipline a child, you can beat the hell out of them. But nothing is going to happen. <laughs> Things will go from the bad to worse. Am I talking sense or not? <laughs> you try that with any kid, you know? Because you keep on beating them, black and blue, nothing is going to happen. The first you know, criteria is a uh, criterion. The first criterion is uh, to love your baby. Amen? When you love, then there is a legitimacy in discipline. Amen? The Bible also says, you know, when God disciplines, it's because He loves you as sons and daughters. Amen? So always the love comes first. So when you receive the love of God first, and then you receive His holiness as well. Love is, inter sorry, holiness is something integrated into your system by loving God. As you love God, as He loves you, you know, a lot of things flow from the loving master into your soul. Now often now we end up saying, Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you. We always keep on saying how much we love God. But we don't really take time to really understand how much God loves us. Now don't generalize anything. Yes, God loves me. That's a general statement. But get into the roots. Understand the word. The Father has lavished His love upon us. His love is unconditional and it is constant all the time, every time. Even in your worst circumstances, I want to tell you, the one thing that's going to remain is the love of God. Amen? Never question the love. No, never challenge that love. The connection is always with the love, not with the holiness. Amen? The connection is always with the love. And the prodigal son went away. He came back. Why? Because of the love of the father. When he saw the son, he went running, embracing you know, kissing him. What's happening? He's showering love. Then what did he say? Now, give him a bath. Right? Put a nice robe on him. Put a nice ring on his fingers. Give him new shoes. Right? Beat the drums. And now let's celebrate my son as come back. 
Right? All this began later. But first thing is love. What the father gave to the prodigal son was love. Love, 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 love. Love to somebody who never deserved anything. Before he could leave home, he would have thought, okay, I deserve the love of the father. Maybe he would have told the father, you are obligated to love me <laughs> because I happen to be a son. You now we see kids talking to dad and mom. Why did he give birth to me? I hope none of you asked the question. The Bible says it's a curse. When somebody asks dad, dad or mom, <laughs> why in the world he gave birth to me? Right? So kids uh, would like to say that parents are obligated to love them. But now, that's what he would have thought when he stayed, when he was a good boy, when everything went well. But I want to tell you, when he left home, when he spoiled daddy's name and abused the world, wasted everything, now he has nothing to claim. He himself concluded, I cannot qualify myself to be one of his sons, but rather I would choose to be one of his slaves. So when he came back, he never expected the same love from the father. So now I would like to highlight something. Even while he was at home, the daddy loved him the same way. You understand what I'm saying? While he was still a son, when everything was going well, but I believe somewhere he did not realize the fullness of the love of the father. He would have taken everything for granted. You follow what I'm saying? Is there any change in the father's love? You know, either before or after he came back from all his sins. There was no change. Father was still the same. Same loving daddy. So I do not know how far he would have realized about the love of his father while he stayed under his roof, under his leadership. And I believe there's every reason to believe that he did not realize the fullness of the father's love. If he had done, he would have not gone out. I told you, now he wants to be independent. Wherever uh, we try to be independent, that's a gap that the enemy can move in. Dependency brings intimacy. Always remember. Dependency brings intimacy. The more the devil knows, so now you are somebody, you are walking total dependency upon God, now he is a failure. Because he knows, you know, whatever you are weak, whatever you fail, the God whom you serve and love, with whom you, uh, with whom you are in an intimate relationship, he is awesome, he is powerful. You know, he can make you to be anything he wants you to be. So what he wants, at first he will like to make you to be independent, not depending upon God, so that he can find a gap to move in. Right? Now what I am teaching you know, this morning is something very new for me about the prodigal son. Just done. It was the same loving father Right? But the realization of who his dad was and his love and all those things, I don't think he fully realized. So now he went out, after losing everything, he's coming back. But still the daddy is the same. But he was not the same. Earlier he would have thought, now daddy is obligated to love me because I happen to be his son. But now he knew for sure that I don't deserve his love. I don't deserve anything from him. He came to a conclusion, I am willing to settle down as one of his slaves. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes or no? But then when daddy came running, and uh, he took hold of him in his tight embrace and kissed him, I want to tell you, this time, the love he received from the father, I want to tell you, it's totally different in terms of realization. Daddy is still the same. But what I'm talking about is uh, how he would have realized the love of the father. You understand what I'm saying? Daddy never changed. The father's love never changed. But then how you would have realized about the father's love? How you would have understood about the love of the father? A new revelation. It was just great and awesome. Amen? Amen. Now daddy loves him even though he never deserved he is getting something that he never deserved. Early he would have thought, now I am getting something what I deserve. Amen? He is my dad. I am his son. All those things. But now, he doesn't deserve anything. So now the daddy gives him something he never deserved in his life. I want to tell you something. It's a beautiful experience. I don't know whether you experience it or not. I have experienced too many times. Amen? 
when you come back to god the love you receive from him is amazing amen he doesn't hold back any love from you right and some place i've seen when the kids and i go run away from home <laughs> when they come back home the mom says he has come back home they say i don't want to see his face okay let him in have you seen this, those cases this daddy is different i want to tell you our loving only father is totally different than all our biological fathers men you would always love more <laughs> those who are gone astray yes thank god for the 99 who was safe and secure in the pen <laughs> but he just went about looking for the one who was away even that one is very important that's why i say god is the god of individuals there's no other person like you believe me there's no other substitute for you there there was another substitute for you god would have <laughs> you know allowed you to be just wiped off if not you could always use somebody else but in his uh, for knowledge and predestination you no know, you were somebody very unique he wanted you among the 7 billion people here on earth god had a plan for your life amen he has a blueprint and master plan it's very exciting jesus while he lived in this world you know he always said now i come to do the will of the father i know i am not worried about what others do but i come with a mission i come with an assignment so when he died and now he shouted saying it is finished that means father i completed what you called me to do maybe there's a one last thing you and i we need to do before we die the last words of a man before he could die what it should be i've been around you know with people who died who breathed their last breath some are fantastic some are confusing and some had nothing to say what do you think would be the last word before you breathe your last breath think about that nothing to think when you are about to die nothing works either but now while you are alive one thing you now that's going to come out of your mouth maybe you know your spouse or kids or, or grandchildren are going to be all around and now what would be the one word you will say Jesus said it is finished it is over amen paul said and before he could die i i finished my race i kept the faith see i would like to tell you something those who would like to depend upon god they seek to do only god's will it's not a question of you get something or you don't get something it's a question of am i in the center of god's will you follow what i'm talking about amen when it comes to desires uh, this and that you know they don't too much and you know, emphasize upon the blessings lord if it is your will let it be done amen, amen. if it's not god's will i want to tell you it's not going to be a blessing there is a way that seems to be right to a man but in the end it leads to death a discerning man prays for god's will i am more concerned about the end than the beginning it is good in my eye in the beginning but where does it lead me Two years from now, five years from now, ten years from now, you know, now we probably you know, we'll get into things that we can never reverse in our lives. We lose years, we lose uh, our resources, we lose our money and strength. You understand what I'm talking about? All those things. Can I tell you something? It's a powerful wisdom statement. You are a loser, always outside of God's will, no matter how good it looks. Write it down. remind yourself say every day i am a loser outside of god's will you gain nothing simply you gain nothing it's more like a mirage you see in the desert it has an appearance but when you go near it still goes far away from you you end up chasing the wind am i right that's why solomon said now after having enjoyed everything in this world he said vanity vanity everything is vanity and i don't want to be beating under the bush i don't want to be chasing the wind i'm called to run after god to take all of the things that our naked eyes can never ever see fix your eyes on things about fix your heart on things about not on things below amen i want to tell you what occupies you that basically determines what drives you 
You can't have one thing on the inside and then do something else. That's why in the life the focus is very, very important. You lose the focus, and I want to tell you in the momentum, you will go anywhere. You understand what I'm talking about? We all are caught up in the momentum. See, listen, it's very important. We are all caught up in the momentum as they grow up. Now, right from the kids, they are born. I think two and a half years, they go to pre nursery, nursery, now LKG, UKG, first standard. I never wanted to study. After I finished my Bible college, I said nothing doing. Right from being childhood till I was 25, I was studying and studying. No more. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Going to school, writing exams, college, this and that. We're all, you know, caught up in a moment. And then you get married, the children, and a job, money, and our promotions, right? And then retirement. And all these things I want to tell you, like, you know, where, you know, when you go fast, okay, no matter how good the vehicle is, when you go fast, you know, they're giving you a steering. Going fast is good, but the question here is, where do you go? Right? From Bangalore, we just hold on to the steering straight. And you don't want to take ship directions. I want to tell you, you'll end up in Kanyakumari Sea after 650 kilometers. Right? Some people are just the same. No sense of direction. And the momentum is picking up. You are now, we are living like a mission. Every day we are living like a mission. You get up, you know, right from the time you get up, you go to bed, we end up doing a lot of things. Uh, and 24 hours is not just enough. In all these things, so you need to have a sense of direction. You need to hold your steering. Where, where am I going? What do I do? How far I'm going? How fast I'm going? Does it make sense? Hmm? No, depending upon God matters only if you want to do the will of God. Then why you have to depend upon God? Right? Those who don't have any inclination to do God's will, there's no point in depending upon God. You can't ask God to do something, what do you want to do? Lord, let my will be done. <laughs> but you help me. You know, Let me do what I want to do. But I'm willing to go my own way, but I want God's help. Always remember, and our dependency upon God is directly connected to the will of God. When you want to do the good, pleasing, perfect will of the Father, I want to tell you, God in heaven will unlock all the resources of heaven at your disposal because you are there to execute His good, pleasing, and perfect will. You don't need to beg for blessings. You don't need to beg for strength. I want to tell you, everything is going to be given to you because you are representing the kingdom of God. You are acting as the ambassador of God. So heaven's resources, heaven's power, heaven's anointing, heaven's glory, you know, heaven's blessings are going to be with you forever and ever to execute what God has called you to do. Amen? So remember, Joseph went as a young man, right? He was deprived of everything. Went as a slave. But he was in the center of God's will. Somebody say amen. amen. And he had everything in his life to become a king. <laughs> That tells me, you know, when God has a plan for you, you don't have to come from a royal lineage. <laughs> right? Your grandfather doesn't have to be a king. <laughs> for you to become a king, you can be a slave in the prison. If God's going to be with you, I want to tell you, you know, you are going to become what God wants you to be. Somebody shout an amen. How many people and how many times, you know, a lot of people, now when I talk to them, they say, I don't come from the background. I say, so what? I would like to ask them, what is your background? They will say, no, shut up. <laughs> Don't talk like that. You are a king's son. You are a king's daughter. Amen. You follow what I am saying? Your background is Christ. Your identity is Christ. It is no longer me that lives, but Christ is the one who lives through me. Who am I? I am born of God. Heavenly Father is my daddy. I'm not often. You know, I have a background. What is my background? Hmm? Turn back and see, you'll find only the cross. <laughs> I'm the resurrection of Jesus. And I been where you finished. I have a heavy backup. And you know, in fact, you know what 
uh, people could not do through the law for so many thousands of years. He gave everything to you in a platter. You have to just believe. But our problem is we have a tough time in believing. The greatest battle that God has with you and me is not about the demons. They're all disarmed. Right? The tough time that God has with you and me is all about believing. To get us to believe what he really says, that's the most difficult thing. That's why he has given us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there to lead you into the full, whole counsel of God, into the fullness of the truth. Now at times I like to bring myself ruthlessly in contact with the word so that and I don't listen to the voice of the devil. You follow what I'm saying? In your lowest moments, when you fail God, you know, what do you see in God's face? <laughs> I think most of us, we see the devil. We don't see God. Yes, and now Peter was sinking down, but he cried, Jesus. He picked him up. Amen? So when we, you know, do something against God, what do we do? Immediately we see the devil and we listen to the voice of the devil. We never look at God. He is still loving and he is still more loving than ever before. If he has to leave behind everything and come all the way, just like he, was, he came looking for the one sheep, I want to tell you, he will come even through the pits of hell. He will come looking for you. How many people I want to tell you, like you know, they were in the jaws of Satan. No, no way they could be saved, but miraculously God went all the way, plucked them from the hands of the devil. Amen. Awesome things. Awesome things. I want to tell you, even the worst sinner can never ever resist the greatness of God's love. It's like a powerful, mighty magnet. So I'd like to tell all of you, just receive God's love. Every day receive God's love. And you know, when you pray to God, now Lord, fill me with your love. Lord, fill me with your love. The love will take control of over everything in your life, your soul, your spirit, your body, your heart and mind. So when you're filled with the love of God, it's going to be easy for you to live for God. Amen? You understand what I'm talking about? When you're filled with the love of God on the inside, it's going to be easy for you to live for God. Because everything is controlled from the inside. When I lack love for God, that's when I end up loving the world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. But if you love God, you will not love the world because you don't have a taste for the world. Does that make sense? Because you're already occupied. Always remember, the devil will like to work whatever you find the empty space. <laughs> Right? When a demon is cast out of somebody, what's going to happen? That person, if they don't get occupied with the things of God, the demon will come back and it will evaluate the same person's life. The house where I left. Remember what it says. The house where I left. It will come back and see it is being unoccupied. That means it is idle. There's no sense of purpose in that person's life. It is clean and unoccupied. It will just take some of the demons and move into that person's life. So his later part of the life will be worse than the first. A devil has no business when your life is occupied with God and His presence and His word. Somebody say an amen. So get your life occupied with the word of God. Two people we can never deceive. One is God, the other one is the devil. Always remember. No matter how we look and how we seem to be before everybody. But I want to tell you, the devil knows exactly who you are. Right? And he's looking for gaps. The area where you don't depend upon God, he knows for sure. Right? There is a gap you would like to move in. He can knock you simply, as simple as it, when you don't depend upon God. The beautiful thing we learn from the life of Jesus. Right? He was tempted like every one of us, but yet he was without sin. sin. It's so beautiful. 
But then you look at his life, he always depended upon the Father. Not even a word he will speak without the Father's permission. He says, my Father teaches me what to say and also how to say. Amen. How easy it's going to be. You know, every morning when you get up, I say that to God, Lord, I don't have strength on my own. I cannot manage my own life. I need help. Today, 100% I'm trusting you and depending upon you. Everything in my, in my confidence, my own, own self and this and that. Lord, I, I just uh, throw everything away. I want you to occupy my life. You know better about me than I know about myself. Everything that's from the world, the flesh and the devil. I would like to disconnect it from my soul, spirit, body, heart and mind and everything. I'm depending, depending upon you, Father, more than 100%. Amen? Just try to say that. It doesn't matter who you are, how powerfully God uses you, how many years you walk with God, doesn't matter. Every day is a new day. Amen? Right? Every day is a new day. You must learn to trust and depend upon the Father. And the Father is delighted and want to tell you. <laughs> Even after you walk with God for 50 years, and every morning when you get up and say to the Heavenly Father, Father, I trust you and I depend upon you. I want to tell you, He is delighted. That's what Jesus did. He, he knew he was the son of the living God. He had all the power and authority under his command. Right? He could have converted the stones into bread, but he said, no, why? That was not the will of the Father. You can do something, but still you won't do. But the devil will always tempt us. Now you can, why not? It's not the question of whether you can or you cannot. The question here is the will of the Father. When you focus on the will of God, I want to tell you, the devil loses the battle. He has nothing to tempt you. Amen? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. What he was trying to say, hey devil, you know, you're talking about bread. <laughs> but I know something that's more than the bread. That is the word of God. I can live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Amen? So what's happening is the devil was trying to draw him from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. Use your spiritual powers to meet your selfish <coughs> needs. The Lord gave him back. He said, I may not have the bread, but I have the word. You get lost. You understand what I'm talking about? I may not have the bread, but I have the word. Word is a billion times more than the bread. I want to tell you something. And because you don't have some of the physical things in your life, you will not die. If when you have the word, you have it all. Yes. Amen? That's why the Bible says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all the other things shall be added to you. Amen? I know, when I go after God, He will add blessings to your life. I want to tell now, a lot of young people here, you know, you go after God. You wait and see. You go after God. Everything will come running after you. Amen. The more and more you just look at yourself and say, now, can I? The devil will tell you, you cannot. Because you're looking at yourself, you become more self-conscious. You're trying to measure your own ability, you know. Can I fight the enemy? Can I withstand the temptation? Why you would look, like to look at yourself? Look at Christ. Amen. As he is the living stone, I am the living stone. And he decreed and declared that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That means that I become the temple of God. That means God's spirit is living in me. Become more of Christ conscious. Now I told you last uh, Wednesday, what you see doesn't have any power to rule over your life. But what you believe has power to write over everything that you see. Amen. You may not see yourself as a perfect person. Never mind, but what you believe is always perfect because you are believing in a perfect God. Say amen. amen. The more you affirm your faith in believing who Christ is, I want to tell you, you will become exactly who he is because he is the wine and you are the branches. And that is the connection through his word. If you abide in my word and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, it shall be given to you. Always remember, when you have the word, you're not a loser. You can have the entire world under your feet, but I want to tell you, if you don't have the word, 
You have nothing. That's what the Bible says, though it cost all you have, get understanding. That means get the word of God. Amen. Seek the understanding that comes from the word of God. I want to tell all the kids here, now just don't live to make money. Just to get good job. Right? I want to do this, I want to do that. Good and fine. But you must live for God. You must live for the purpose of God. You must acquire the word of God. You must earn the word of God. You must find the treasures in God's word. Amen. Remember the entire world is being kept. reserved for fire through the word. Through the word he created the entire world. When there was nothing. It was empty, void and literally there was nothing. But God spoke the word. When he spoke the word, the creative word of God brought into existence everything that you and I we see today. So now the Bible says, through the same word, the heavens and the earth, they have been kept, reserved for fire, through the same word. The time is going to come, everything will go away. All that you see will vanish into thin air. All that exists will stop existing. But the one thing that shall be forever, it is the word. So if you believe in the word, you're going to live for all eternity, just like the word is going to exist. That's what the Bible says, you know, heavens and earth may pass away. But the one who does the will of God shall live forever. Somebody shout an amen. <coughs> so my focus is the will of God. That's the reason the devil cannot beat you. That's the reason the devil cannot defeat you. So you like to tell you, you know, probably you know you like that. You like that. Why not you go for it? <laughs> Though it's not God's will. But you say it's not a question of whether I get it or I, I don't get it. It may be a job, it may be money, it may be a house, it may be gold or silver, it may be a vehicle, it may be a car, it may be a, a bike, and it may be about a boy or a girl going to get married. It's not a question of getting something, it's a question of doing the will of God. I'm seeking the will of God. I'm not seeking something, but I'm seeking the will of God. Amen? My blessing is the will of God. Because I know, you and I know, as I said, in the center of God's will, I am rooted and I am blessed abundantly. And outside of God's will, I am always a loser. And we need to pray to God, Lord, whether you give me something or not, I want to be in the center of God's will. Because that is the fountain of my blessing. That's where I want to be planted. Amen. What a beautiful God we serve. Amen? Amen. But you have to believe God wants the best for you in your life. God has the best for you than the better things that your little human mind could ever configure. My mind say, oh, hey, this is the best for you, but God has better things. You don't have to force things to happen. Amen? Lord, let your will be done as it is done in heaven. We know in heaven it's being done. Amen? Because the kingdom of God is perfect in heaven. And the kingdom of God is moving here on earth as well. Amen? So as it is being done in heaven, let it be done here on earth in my life. Amen? And the devil, I want to tell you, he's going to flee from you when, you, when he's going to listen what you say. The will of God as it is done in heaven will be done in my personal life today, will be done in my business today, will be done in my family today, will be done in my children's life today. Because the devil knows, he has no access to our lives when we live in the center of God's will. Getting to know God is very amazing and really and truly liberating. You shall know the truth. What does it mean? You shall know Jesus Christ. Who is the truth? Truth is not something. Truth is somebody. Truth is a person. You shall know the truth and the knowledge of the truth will set you free. So remember, the more you're going to educate yourself, the more you're going to learn the word of God. All right? And it's going to bring liberation. It's going to cut every knot in your system, in your soul, spirit and body. Every ties the enemy has bound you with. It's going to cut off 
all those things i want to tell you when you mean business with the word of god the word becomes spirit and life in your soul in your spirit and body you can feel the fire of his anointing right in your bones because the word of god is spirit and life it is god breathed so as you come in contact with the word i want to tell you it's something like touching a fire and it will consume everything which is of darkness everything that's rooted in your soul spirit and body from the world of darkness you can say in jesus name i root it out i have rooted by the power in the name of jesus christ of nazareth amen, amen. always uh, the power of god is in the word of god amen. and you can be liberated in every area of your life in your personal bible study as you come to the bible study here in the church in your quiet time because you're working with the word devil is a liar the power of satan is in his lies but the power of god is in the truth don't worry about now who or all the mistakes you've done but focus on what you believe amen you understand what i'm saying we are imperfect but what we believe is perfect the god whom i trust is perfect i'm not all that i, I should be but i know i'm moving forward I'll not be the same as I am today. I'll be a better person. Think like that. Talk like that. Converse like that. Focus your eyes upon Jesus. I want to tell you, God is with you. Even in your lowly moments, God is with you. Amen. Do away with every spirit of guilt and condemnation. Rise up in Jesus' name. And move forward. sometimes now listen this is very important sometimes we can be believers uh, we can come to god you know and attend the bible study go, come to church give our tithes and offerings uh, and we can do ministry and all those things but a lot of people don't receive the love of god yes i came to church but what did i receive yeah i sang songs that's going to be fine i do some ministry that's going to be fine but did you experience the love of god every time you come into the presence of god do you receive the love of god oh like a stone we come we just in a spectator so we just walk out no the love of god should penetrate your heart you understand what i'm saying it must get into every fiber of your being into every cell in your system because of my god is a loving god how can i come to somebody who is loving and still not feel loved amen if you don't feel the love something is blocking you must say to god lord fill me with your love good to sing songs but i want to sing it with love good to do ministry but i want to do it with love amen, amen. think about one thing now most of the people um who are like tabs in the society untouchable in the societies and our sinners tax collectors uh, prostitutes uh, and all those people came to jesus what is the thing they received what did they sense first love what drew them love the bible talks about now prostitutes uh, coming and falling at his feet right and worshiping him they have seen a lot of men but this man is different this man is different they sense love not condemnation he asked a woman who was caught in adultery saying no what are those who condemned you everyone left right from the youngest to the oldest he said neither do i i want to tell you even now and all those who watch us through the net as well i would like to tell you even now god doesn't condemn you if you still feel being condemned i want to tell you it's a self condemnation because of the lack of truth this is a time to rise up and get up and walk back to god amen no matter where we are what will be a situation what will be a condition it's a time to rise up and walk back to god is just waiting waiting to shower love once again to hold you in his tight embrace once again to kiss you once again to d- take you back in his own house once again to celebrate your love once again amen you lost everything but not the love of the father that's why still we are believers say amen. amen still that's the reason still we are serving god at times you know we disobeyed god we lost a lot of things we lost our business and we lost our finance we made some foolish thing decisions right 
It had consequences. But one thing we did never lose. Uh, right? We never lost was the love of God. We came back only because of the love. Amen? The devil is mad <laughs> against your life and my life because of God's love. He questions God why you should love man. Who is man that you should be mindful about him? That you should think about him every morning. Test him every morning. He is mad. He tells to God he doesn't deserve your love. Because he disobeyed the commandments. That's all I want to tell you. The power, uh, the, the one person who made use of the law really well was the devil. <laughs> because he used it against you and me. So until God would do something about it, he you know, foreordained this. You know, before the foundation of the world, the Bible says, and he ordained the Lamb of God for you and me. Amen. So when he came to the world, he demonstrated his love for you and me. He paid the ultimate price for you and me. So the devil can never question God again. Amen. It is paid in fullness. He shut the mouth of the devil. That's what the Bible says, Colossians 2.15. He disarmed the powers and authorities on the cross and made it a public spectacle, climbing over them. It was a public spectacle, climbing over Satan on the cross. How do you like it? Amen. My goodness. Now you will never call yourself as a weakling, as somebody who is not worthy. And if you really understand what God has done for you, your worth and the value has become billion times more <laughs> because Jesus died for you on the cross. Overnight you became a celebrity. God never gives, never does anything for nothing. If I'm going to give my son <laughs> to this entire world, I want every one of them back. Amen? So make the point every time, no, you have a quiet time, and then before you walk out of house, first thing you need to ask God, Lord, fill me with your love. Let me go around with your love. I don't want to judge people. I don't want to criticize people. I want to be full of your love. You understand what I'm saying? As you go to the office, as you talk to people, as you talk to neighbors, uh, let the love of God infiltrate every area of your life. Your soul, your spirit, body, everything. Let it take complete control. When people come in contact with you, let them sense love. I want to tell you, love is irresistible. I'm not talking about the love that we find in the world. Even sinners love other people. I'm talking about godly love. That means you, know, you love other people in the way God has loved you. Amen. Ask God every day, fill me with your love, O oh God. I want to feel your love. I want to be filled with your love. I tell God, Lord, if you don't fill me with your love, it's going to be very difficult for me to live for you. <laughs> the only thing that controls me, grounds me, is the love of Christ. It's the same with you. That's the same with the Son of the living God. You love the Father. Amen. It was a final battle in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed. Now you are sweating drops of blood. He prayed, Lord, even at that point you see that, you know, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. It is too much. I cannot bear it. But then he prayed, it's not my will, but let your will be done. And that's the moment the devil lost the battle. I want to tell you, every time you uphold the will of God, every time you say to God every day, Lord, I want to be in the center of God's will about everything concerning my life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially, you know, physically, in my job, in my career, in my studies, in my decision, all these things. I want to seek your will. I want to tell you, you will prosper in the center of God's will. Amen. God has a great plan for you. But He loves you too much. Always remember. He loves you too much. And I don't think many of us, we really understand how much God loves us. Like the prodigal son, while he stayed at home, I don't think he fully understood the love of God. <laughs> love of the Father. Probably he took everything for granted. Oh, you know, he had to love me just like any other father because I happened to be his son. But when he came back, it's the same father. Father never changed. 
It's the same love. But how we receive the love, how we realize the love, it was on a, totally on a different dimension altogether. Amen. I want to tell you, every time we come back to God, we are more grateful than ever before. Am I right? Hmm? There is no place for self-confidence or self-righteousness. Every time we say to God, Lord, all that I have and all that I become, it is something I don't deserve at all. Amen? And He gave it out of love. Just like how He loved you in the beginning, He is going to love you till the end. Did God ever change His mind? Hmm? Hello? Did God ever change His mind? While you were still sinners, He loved you. If that's going to be the case, and He's going to just do the same until you die. God has invested too much in you to let you go just like that. God has invested too much in you to let the devil take control of your life. Amen? Everything is covered. His death and His resurrection has covered everything concerning your life. Somebody shout an amen. amen. You are fully covered. There is no area where God has not covered you, where the devil can blame you. Amen? Take hold of God's love. The more you understand about His love, the more you receive His love, the more you are going to be Empowered to live a holy life. Isn't it amazing? I want to know you more, God. My problem is, you know, I don't God know God enough. We don't spend time with God enough. God says, if only you would come to me, I would open up my heart to you. He likes to have an intimate relationship. Amen. I want to tell you, the more God's going to reveal his secrets to you, the devil is shattered. What the devil doesn't know, you know. That's an advantage. Amen? Wisdom is not with Satan. Wisdom is with us. <laughs> Why? Because that th these are two different natures. One is darkness, the other one is light. We don't move in the same dimension. We don't move, operate in the same level of power. If you are from the kingdom of light, you are light yourself. And the devil, no matter how great he is in the kingdom of darkness, still is darkness. And no way like you know, darkness can compete with light. You understand what I'm talking about? Because we have two different natures. We are from two different worlds. It's a two different kingdoms. You have to understand this. You have become somebody because of what Christ has done for you. Something has happened to me. I may not feel the same way, but that's what the Bible teaches. That's why I'm saying it's not a question of doing little more. It's a question of believing the right things. Before you have a right living, start believing the right things. If you want to know who you are, know who Christ is. The more you know about Christ, you'll have the mind of Christ. You'll think like Christ. You war with Christ. In Him we have a reality. However, the reality is found in Christ. Colossians chapter 3. In Him we live and move and have a being. Acts chapter 17. Isn't it amazing? Ignorance is always expensive. <laughs> Hello? Mm? If you are struggling for one meal a day and live the rest of your life like that without knowing in your own house, in your own land, there was a huge treasure for several billions. <laughs> Ignorance. That's what we do. We live a very impoverished spiritual life because of ignorance. We do not know where is what. And my wife goes out of station, you know, and I call her, no, where I kept this, where I kept that. I do not know. It's going to take a little while for me to find those things and then cook. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes in the kingdom of God we do not know where is what. You can never go beyond what you know, always remember. Your wisdom and your knowledge decides the level you move. Though it costs all you have, seek, get understanding, get wisdom. 
Wisdom will prosper you. To build up our muscle is good, right? To go to the gym and then build up our muscle. You understand what I'm talking about? But if you don't have wisdom, what's the use of having a muscle? You understand what I'm talking about? Who is great? The guy, one guy has a lot of wisdom. The other guy is only bulky, very masculine. Who's more powerful? Don't look at me, just tell you. Who is more powerful? The guy who has a lot of muscle will be a slave to the one who has wisdom. I want to tell you, thousands of these muscled men, one man with wisdom will rule over. One wise man attacks the city of the wise man attacks the city of the mighty and takes over it. To be mighty is their strength, but they don't have wisdom. I don't mean to say now you like to be puny, don't do exercise. What I'm trying to say is the value is in wisdom, not just in building a muscle. Amen. We need to take care of physique, but the more important thing is wisdom. Because my people perish for lack of wisdom. I can have a strong physical body, still I can ruin my life because I don't have wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. Pray for wisdom. Wisdom is sweet to your soul. Think about wisdom. Amen. I want to tell you, think, uh, no, wisdom is going to multiply in your life. Listen, this is very important. Wisdom is going to multiply in your life when you share it with somebody. Yes. You know something, you share it with somebody. I love the book of Ecclesiastes and Proverbs. <laughs> right? Tips for your practical living. Wow. No wonder the Bible says the man took delight in God's word and he was meditating about the word of God day and night. Why? Delight, 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 delight. He was enjoying what he was doing. Amen? Amen. I would like to tell you as I wind up uh, tonight, God is going to bless you abundantly when you allow his word to prosper in your soul. Amen. You know, receive his word and also receive his love. Even if you pray for 15 minutes or half an hour, the point is not just about praying. You must receive the love of the Father. Amen. You must feel it in your heart. You read your Bible and then it's not a question of just reading for the sake of reading. You must feel love. Amen. If you love me, you'll obey my commands. Uh, that means God wants to approach this book with love. Without love, no matter how many hours you read, I want to tell you, it doesn't make any sense to you. Revelation comes because you love God. Amen. Not you're intellectually capable. You can have a PhD, but still you may not know God. You follow what I'm saying? What I would like to tell you, you love God and take the Bible and read with love. Revelation comes for those who love God. Amen? John the Revelator, he loved God so much, so no wonder God showed him a lot of things. He wrote the book of Revelation. Revelation comes to those who love Jesus. Amen? God has too many servants, but few lovers. <laughs> right? You have to love Jesus. Amen? Amen? When you pray, pray with love. Read the Bible, read with love. Serve God, serve with love. I say to God every time I go I get into church, uh, me and my wife, before we leave the home, even when we leave the office, we say, Lord, fill us uh, with your love and grace before we go to people. I need the love. Amen. Amen. Because without the love of God, anything you try to do for God, I want to tell you, it is not valid. It is useless. Amen. Amen. So would you pray for God's love to fill you every day? Yes. Amen. Every day. Lord, fill me. Fill me. Occupy me, O God. Everything in me, my soul, my spirit, my body, everything, every day, fill me with your love. Say to God, today I'm going out. Be with me. Fill me with your love. I want to tell you, the love fills your soul then the love is in control of everything in your life. Amen? Amen? So let's pray. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, God. We give you praise tonight that you have sp spoken to our hearts. Lord, we want to continue to love you, God. 
We want to live a life with God that is pleasing to you, O Father. I pray for everyone who has listened to your word tonight and all those who God watches through the net. In the name of Yeshua and Mashiach, I speak your love. I speak your grace. So every day, O God, let them be the recipient of God's love. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 17, those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness, they will reign in light through the one man Jesus Christ of God. Lord, every one of us, we are the recipients of God's abundant provision of love. We are the seed of love. So we are called to reign, O God. Hallelujah. I pray, O God, all those who listen to this Bible study, Lord, they will never question the love of God. Even in their loneliest moments, O God, Lord, lowest to moments in their lives, oh God. Lord, even at times they have done something wrong against you, but even in this situation, your love is reaching out to them, oh Father, to restore them back, oh God, to bring them back, to win them back, oh Father, Lord. Lord, let them realize, oh God, still you love them more than ever before. Your love never changes. Even at times when you fall away from you, God, I pray they will realize the love of God and they will come back in Jesus' name. Lord, I am led to pray for those, oh God, who are backslidden, oh God. Lord, who have stopped praying, who have stopped going to church because they have done something wrong. They are questioning the love of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak to every one of them, oh God. Let the eyes be open. Let their hearts be open. Open to receive the love of Jesus, O oh Father. Like, O oh God, went about, uh, Lord, embracing the prodigal son. You kissed him, O oh God. You took him back uh, into your loving home, O oh Father. So shall it be, O oh God. All those who are backslidden, O oh God, who listen to this word, uh, they will come back running into the arms of God. Lord, restore everything, O oh God. Bring back everything, O oh Lord. Uh, I bless your children, O oh God. I pray for everybody here who are taking time to be here every Wednesday to hear the word of God, to learn from the word. Lord, they'll reap a mighty harvest through the word of God. Every word they'll listen to God. It'll become a seed in their lives, O oh Father. Let it become a seed and bring back a, a mighty harvest in their lives, O oh God. We bless them, Lord, tonight in Jesus' name, O oh God. We give you all the glory, honor, the power, and praise. You alone deserve it, now and for all eternity. In Jesus' most powerful name we pray. God's people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen.